Hello, good evening to everyone. My topic for presentation is image guided radiotherapy. I intend to answer these questions in this lecture. What is IGRT? Do we need to treat all patients with image guidance, which means palliative, radical, highly conformal radiotherapy? What kind of a patient would be suitable? A brief history of treatment verification and image guidance. The benefits of IGRT by reducing the PTV margins. A brief overview of the technologies that has been explored for image guided radiotherapy purposes. Look at this image. It is a Canada Post stamp released in 1988 with the image of a cobalt unit in honor of Dr. John Cunningham. IGRT is not a new or even a recent idea because in 1951, in the same image, John Cunningham documented and he envisaged that an X-ray imaging system to visualize what is being treated would be required when we are treating using the telecobalt megavoltage beams. The idea didn't quite catch up on the few decades and over a period of time, there were lot of academic research developments, but image-guided radiation therapy was not in two clinics. The reason could be the time was not ripe enough with the other developments which happened later stages, which are the multimodality image registration for target delineation, the era of precision radiation therapy by the development of MLC, IPIT portal imaging, one could do a highly dose conformal treatments, plan a inverse planning system and delivery systems were feasible. Let us look back the classical approach of radiotherapy delivery. The patient is aligned on an RTP CT scanner, tattooed the reference mark, scanned the patient and transferred to the planning system in which the target delineation happens, new beam portals are being defined, those distribution visualized, and the new ISO center transported to the patient back as a projection, and you put the tattoos on the skin mark. Now, again, the patient is aligned on the treatment machine with respect to the tattoos and the skin marks and treated for many days. In principle, this procedure should be accurate, but it is not the case. Hence, because we were doing the treatment with reference to the skin marks and maybe taking a portal image on the first day of the treatment and verifying it against the simulator film. So this could help to avoid cross errors, but arguably did it improve the accuracy? No, because the patient was not aligned with respect to the target, which could be an internal anatomy or a so internal fiducial marker, the patient could not be reproduced for everyday treatment accurately. The next technological advancement was the IPID portal imaging system. Amorphous silicon portal imaging system offered good quality of images and became the standard of care. A significant workflow was seen in clinical practice after the introduction of offline review approaches and subsequently developing the PTV margin recipes by Marzel Van Herp. They could do with PTVs like having first three days portal imaging, having an action level, and then monitoring it weekly basis. Again, in 1980s, there were a lot of developments on the software tools which were necessary for quantifying these images for analysis of PTV recipes. And then the real revolution of practically image guidance started. In 1997, David Joffrey and John Wong from Princess Margaret Hospital, Canada, envisaged a project proposal for developing a KV-based planar and volumetric image for image guidance on the treatment machine, which is integrated on board. So it is sometimes called as OBI. 
And this prototype model was clinically available in 2004 at Netherlands Cancer Institute. And 2005, they released this KV-based image guidance worldwide. And very soon, for all kinds of uh, IMRT and VMAT treatments, now it is an integral part of the treatment unit for delivering highly conformal radiation therapy with image guidance. So what is image guidance? Different questions to answer. Difficult because it was assumed by people in different meaning. Because some people doing a MB first day imaging thought it is image guidance. Some repeating that over a period of time and having an action level and no action level was a little confusing the imaging protocols and is it real image guidance or not. So some defined it very broad and some very narrow. The East European Institute of Radiotherapy reported by Corman et al. in 2010 that IGRT means at reducing geometric uncertainties by evaluating the patient geometry at the treatment and either altering the patient position or adapting the treatment plan with respect to the anatomical changes that occur during the radiotherapy treatment. So this was the modified, defi refined IGRT definition. Now coming back to the question, why we need IGRT? Look at this image, this CTV is there. When you have an expansion of five millimeter PTV margin, this overlaps the organ at risk. So conventional radiation therapy treatment like parallel opposing beams are done up to a limit of the tolerance dose of the normal structures. But in the same case, if you reduce this PTV margin, one can try to aim at tight conformal IMRT dose distribution and escalate the dose to this PTV because the PTV is outside the organ at risk. In this case, when you take a profile here, like this is the target and these are the OIR structures, when you treat conventional beams, you treat both like this and assume that these patients are treated inside a mask and in the mask, thermoplastic mask, you can have, a, have again a few millimeter movement. So assume three millimeter variation, what happens in the conventional radiation therapy? The target is treated simply, but in conformal radiotherapy, it precisely misses the target and treats the organ at risk. Hence, the idea of image guidance was to take portal imaging of AP and lateral on a daily basis, match it with the reference GRR and reproduce the same for with the tool of image guidance. This attempt of image guidance significantly reduced the CTV to PTV margin and without compromise, neither the normal tissue, PCT or the sparing of the critical structures and the goal of radiotherapy was achieved, which is the right balance of PCT and PCP. Now look at this, if this IMRT was treated without IGRT, it is a precise way of missing the target. If you treat accurately, but not precisely, you need to use a wider margin in radiation therapy, which means we are treating a lot of normal tissue or organ at risk. Now, if you treat IMRT with IGRT, it is precise and accurate by which you are able to treat the target to a high degree of conformal treatment, as well as avoid the organ at risk by doing a conformal avoidance. Let us look into this slide, the influence of margin reduction and its impact on volume. The volume, assume an orange fruit, which is of five centimeter in radius and remove the peel, which is five millimeter in thickness. It it amounts to 50% of its original volume, which means margin reduction yields to volume reduction in a substantial way. Otherwise, we will be end up treating a lot of normal tissue. So margin reduction is always desirable, but remember, one cannot do with zero margin because of uncertainties in image guidance and in 
evaluating the reproducibility system of the imaging systems what we use. So what are the other uncertainties which are not resolved by IJRT? The most important one, which is the target volume definition. Remember, if target volume error exists, it is systemic in nature and may result in underdose of the target. Next is inadequacy of the surrogate that has been used in IGRT. So a careful choice of a surrogate considering a site and a technique may be required. So a detailed SOP in this regard will be helpful. But the, although we can take care of the respiratory motion to some extent as a volume encompassing technique in even IGRT, static IGRT, there are certain motions that cannot be corrected the motions which are too fast, like coughing, the motions which are too complex, like a bubble movement. It's very difficult and challenging to correct. Now, coming to the planar imaging used for IGRT. The electronic portal imaging initially started with the video camera-based system. Later, matrix ion chambers were explored. And finally, the amorphous silicon flat panel detector, which is able to offer a good quality of image with high resolution, became the standard of CAT. And this could provide you MV portal imaging and having two orthogonal portal images, one can have a 3D data. The next one was the onboard KV imaging, which means they mounted a KV X-ray tube and a flat panel KV detector in orthogonal angle to the MV beam. The other one is the stereoscopic orthogonal imaging. In this, two X-ray tubes are floor mounted and two flat panel detectors are mounted on the ceiling to get an orthogonal imaging. And this was a periphery solution. And this served as a periphery solution and it could have been used for inter as well as intrafraction image guidance. Ultrasound was one, the one which was initially explored for the purpose of prostate relocalization during radiotherapy. Remember, the surrogate, either a bony or markers are required to identify the target. Next was the planar information was difficult to interpret the out of plane rotation, which is the role of a patient. And if role exists, matching of these two planar imaging also becomes quite challenging. What are the advantages of EPID image? It initiated the IGRT culture, both for online and offline. Image created with the treatment beam, direct verification of the treatment, because since it was a MV image, and also if there is the MLC shaping, you could see what is being shielded and having a double exposure technique, you can also see what is outside the beam, what was avoided. The disadvantage is where it only offers 2D imaging and you have to have multiple beam angles to have 3D informations and also requires a surrogate to localize that target. Stereoscopic imaging also helped localizing prior to the treatment machine. And we need to have implanted radio opaque markers in the soft tissue, or in the absence of a marker, one could use the bony anatomy for image guidance. But remember, since they are, the, they are having oblique angles, it is always a little difficult to interpret these oblique images compared to a topo or a sagittal view. Further, this stereoscopic KV imaging eliminates the inaccuracies caused by the skin shift that occurred during traditional external markers. The next one is the ultrasound guided system, ultrasound guided system, which has the advantage that it does not require a surrogate because it offers soft tissue information, which is good to localize every day prior to the treatment. So ultrasound probes, were being tagged with optical infrared markers to give a room isocenter with respect to the treatment isocenter and they enabled us to do shifts of the table to match, reproduce the target. 
remember this during the treatment the alignment assumes that the ct contour is in similar in shape and size of the prostate as seen in the ultrasound because these two these two imaging modalities are different so the way you uh, the target is evaluated has a subjectivity by the observer for the onboard imaging system using one can have a ap and a lateral image and do a shift manually or automatically based on the uh, bony structures and one can evaluate the translational and rotation shift here but remember the role cannot be evaluated nor corrected onboard imager offers the mv1 which ipid offered a very poor tissue contrast and unclear projection of the bony anatomy and that was a major limitation of the ipid mv image hence the planar kv imaging has been very well accepted for good quality of image guidance because what we could see clearly that's what we could match and we can reproduce and treat so there is also having this mv and kv one can do either a kv kv 2d match or in order to reduce the treatment setup time one could do a kv mv matching also and nowadays with the true beam machines even the mv images are so good and reasonable for matching next i am coming to the volumetric image so all the vendors varian siemens and electa provided either a kv or a mv based cone beam ct for volumetric information whereas tomotherapy provided a fan beam ct mv ct for image guidance why we need volumetric imaging 3d definitions of anatomy in a volumetric manner is needed in the treatment room because we can look into the internal target structure as well as the organet risk like bladder and rectum on a daily basis the bladder filling is it uniform was it similar to that of the reference ct further cone beam ct with full field of view was adequate enough to produce electron density values to recalculate the dose distributions on the cbct data and ct images had been widely accepted because radiation oncologist is familiar use it for target delineation and the same thing having it on a verification makes more sense imaging prior to the treatment is possible and the major limitation with the volumetric imaging is that can it be done during the treatment is a challenge the other option what was explored for volumetric image guidance in the initial was having a linac and a diagnostic ct unit inside the same bunker installed opposite to each other and a couch is been shared between both the units and it rotates 180 degree after doing a ct and looking whether it is re, it is reassured you rotate the couch 180 degree with respect to the linac isocenter and then do the shifts if it is there and then treat the patient the advantage is that it can offer diagnostic quality even a 4d ct can be done but the disadvantage is that the couch sag between the ct and the linac is a problem because when you rotate it and do a translational motion assuming a fixed relationship between the linac isocenter and the ct images relies purely on the mechanical integrity further putting two units on the same room and using uh, is a capital cost because very few cts can be done on this and you are going to treat 40 patients on a day on the linear accelerator so this becomes a little high cost and redundant motion of the patient during rotation is also a problem when you rotate this couch 180 degree patient tend to move a bit now coming to volumetric imaging fan beam versus cone beam what is fan beam a source is there a single kv source with a linear array detected on the o ring and it has been the source rotates and this and a helical fashion and you can have a fan beam ct which is conventionally available in all diagnostic ct scanners and the same way in the helical tomotherapy they have a mv source and a detector in the same way in a o ring structure and produce a mv fan beam ct in the linear accelerator you can have a wide large area of a beam 
And so we needed a large panel amorphous silicon detector like 40 by 40 centimeters. And you can use the same thing for producing a MVCBCT or a KVCBCT. Remember that the fan, that fan beam geometry can rotate faster and because it images a smaller volume per rotation, so reduced scatter. Hence, superior image quality. Hence, a superior image quality of the same source, maybe it is a KV or MA, is always seen on the fan beam geometry irrespective uh, than the cone beam geometry. Because in cone beam geometry, you have a larger scatter of the patient degrading the image qualities. Nowadays, you have a lot of scatter correction algorithms in the software. In spite of that, the fan beam geometry offers superior image quality. So look at the current status of the delivery systems. It can be grouped as C-arm because we have a C-arm type of uh, linear accelerators, which we conventionally use either a variant true beam or a Versa HT, equipped with multi-leaf collimator, multi-photon energies, flattening filter free, KV cone beam CT, planar as well as what. Well. Also this machine can support non-coplanar treatments the other contemporary is current status is non CRM systems like the O-ring gantry, the Halcyon, which has been produced by Varian or Akure Radzad, which is the advanced equipment of the tomotherapy, has a single photon energy with flattening filter free photons. They have dual layer of MLC in the Halcyon machine with the MVCV CT capability, as well as also in future, they may be coming up with KV CVCT as well. So this will help for inter and intra fractal motion management in the equipment. But here, for this uh, accurate, accurate equipment, they use a binary MLC and it produces a MV CBCT and uses always a narrow beam geometry, uh, narrow fan beam geometry for producing the CBCT. Looking into this slide, the all these technologies, whether it is done through a fan beam or a cone beam, remember these commercially either Varian, Onboard or Siemens, were able to correct automatically translational and some rotate. And all of them offered submillimeter accuracy. However, the MVCBCT for the Siemens reported to be a larger dose of three to 10, but in tomotherapy, since they use a degraded uh, MV source for imaging, the doses were in the order of 0.7 to 3 centigrade. The other KV uh, imaging offers much less dose. Why? Again, uh, this is a teaching slide and I want to emphasize why KV is always superior than MV. We all know KV means photoelectric effect. The atomic number is proportional to the Q. So KV has a uh, predominantly due to the photoelectric effect. Whereas in the MV Compton scattering is predominant, which is basically due to the electron density values. Look at this image. They did an experiment in a phantom of 20 centimeter, put a one centimeter, uh, did a, uh, one centimeter either a air or a bone structure and imaged it and assessed the image contrast between these and for uh, different energies. So for the KV energy range, you could see that the subject contrast was quite a lot in comparison to the air when you placed in that phantom in the MV. So what it offers is that this contrast is 10 to 20 times larger in KV imaging compared to the MV. So always KV will be superior in terms of image contrast. So using this KV imaging, one can do a KV cone beam CT and the data are something like this, giving such a good information, relatively equivalent to a diagnostic imaging quality. And we could appreciate and match for the prostate volume and see the rectal and bladder fillings on a day-to-day -day basis and apply the shifts for doing an image character. So what is better visualized could only be treated accurately. So now coming back to the volumetric information provides static data to account for interfractional variability in patient setup. 
So what are the features? Soft tissue contrast, patient imaged in the treatment position. It produces 3D isotropic spatial resolution. Geometrically, it is precise, calibrated to the LINAC treatment on a Now, what are the limitations? It is not a fast acquisition. The acquisition takes at least one and a half to two minutes. It doesn't offer diagnostic quality because of the scatter is larger always. Now come to the motion. We always, patients, irrespective of whether you are, they are immobilized or they are used on a positioning device, the patient is breathing, so motion is always inevitable. Like a motion which is a breathing can be respiratory waveform, you can have a 4D and done. So when you do some imaging with motion, it is necessary to tag the image with the motion for verification purposes. So you can either perform a gated CVCT, which is acquisition of the image happens during that particular phase or the amplitude of the respiration. Or we can do a 4D CVCT, aqueous and brings all the images which corresponds to the respiratory waveform, which is later reconstructed and evaluated. This is another uh, interesting equipment which was introduced for the purpose of SBRT, a O-ring structure with a good mechanical integrity of a, a isocenter and able to produce non-coplanar beams by the by this entire uh, C O ring can rotate, the O ring can swipe, and it had a dimplet MLC tracking motions also. So, with this, they assured that they can have the best isocentric accuracy of 0.3 for even non coplanar beams, and they showed a huge potential for SBRT type of treatments with inter and intra fraction image guidance. Again, real-time tumor tracking was way back envisaged by the Japanese and later exact track proved to be there using the uh, orthogonal stereoscopic imaging and markers kept on the uh, patient in terms of a marker belt. You can relate the markers for gated radiation therapy. CyberKnife also uses the exact track system with uh, sophisticated software for tracking. And the other one is the big on electro transducers used for the calypso system produced like a gps system to know its location tracking for the tumor motion another one is the optical and the infrared uh, infrared device which is called the vision or the align rt once you have set up a patient after interfraction you can monitor them using these infrared uh, uh, optical systems finally I would like to say that there are recent like ultrasound has again recome in as a clarity system by Electa for prostate IGRT for inter as well as inter, intra fraction motion managements. And MRI offered a huge potential because as I said, patients will inevitably be breathing and some moment will be always uh, there. So we need to do inter and intra and adaptive radiotherapy for a given patient. So MRI showed a huge potential and MRI LINAC is also on, available by Electa Unity, as well as they tried Vuray with cobalt sources and Vuray is coming up again with uh, MR LINAC as well. Finally, I would like to say that a stereotactic radio surgery unit like a gamma knife perfection which relies high on the mechanical isocenter accuracy, also now thought that we need to fractionate these radiotherapy treatments to fewer three or five, and has reintroduced with the mask system and the cone beam CBCT for interfraction and infrared for the intrafraction motion management strategies. So to summarize, image guidance has proved to offer radiotherapy treatment precisely, Choice of the surrogate has to be very carefully chosen depending upon the site and the technique. Simple image guidance can happen with the MV EPID as well as 2D KV imaging. However, volumetric imaging would be required to know the entire 3D 
translational as well as rotational corrections to be performed nowadays with the help of the six degrees of freedom of the couch. And in spite of all these IGRTs, there are still uncertainties that need to be accounted as a safety margins. And hence the PTV margin can never remain zero even with high end of image guidance. Thank you. Thank you very much.